Hello, my name is Diamond Fernandez, and I'm your founder and director of the HeartFit Clinic, your leaders in heart health. And today, what I want to really talk to you about is how to navigate yourself, uh, you know, through our healthcare system. How do you navigate yourself? How do you find out what your risk is of a heart attack or stroke, or w where you are? So let's talk about that part of it, and we'll uh, go into those details. So let's talk about the first step here. If if you go see your family doctor, and your family doctor is important, so they're the hub of your uh, healthcare system and what a family doctor can do is check some important things. They can check to see what your blood pressure is, they can check to see uh, your blood work, they can check to see your cholesterol, um, you know they can check to see if you're at risk of diabetes and then they can manage your medications really which is important. But if you want to know what your risk is of a heart attack or stroke a GP doesn't have much in their toolbox to see really what your risk is. So what they end up doing is they end up referring you to a cardiologist. Now let's talk about this part of it because this is very important. So many people, okay, well, I'm going to see this cardiologist and I'm going to see really what is my risk of a heart attack or stroke. So you go to the cardiologist and they, and they do some important tests with you, which is very, uh, there, there's some important ones. They can do an ECG. And an ECG is a test where we look at your heart rhythm to see what's going on. It's a one-time snapshot of your heart and it's kind of a waste of time in my opinion. Uh, because if you're going to see a cardiologist, they can do some other tests that are very important to you. So uh, one is, that is really good is what we call an echocardiogram. And an echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart. And it looks at the structure and it looks at the function. Uh, you got valves in your heart and they got different chambers in your heart and you can see how the blood is flowing between the structure of the heart. Now this does not look for coronary artery disease. It looks for other types of heart disease such as valvular disease. It can look for um, you know heart failure or, or things that are structural related. So more valves and, and structural related aspects of it. Now if we're looking for coronary artery disease, uh, the big test that we focus on is a stress test and most people have heard that. And a stress test is an exercise treadmill test. You go on a treadmill and you walk to near your maximum. We can see how your ECG is doing while you're exercising. Now, the problem with this test is it will only show advanced stages of the disease. Let me explain. So if we look inside an artery, so let me draw an artery here. Uh, I'll use a different color. So we got an artery here and let's say it's blocked. It's got to be you know, quite significantly blocked. So here's where the blood will be flowing. It's got to be about, I'd say, 80% or more blocked before it starts to show up on a stress test. So you got two outcomes from a stress test, which, um, in my opinion, are neither good. And I'll explain why. Is one, the first outcome is you're given a clean bill of health. You're said, okay, uh, you know, Thank you for coming into our clinic. We found out that there's nothing wrong with your stress test, meaning that you keep on going as you are. Yet you can still be on the path of a heart attack or stroke just because you could have a 50% blockage. Now something that is very important to understand is, let's go through this artery analogy here quickly for a second. Let's say your artery is 50% blocked, or let's say even less than that. Let's call it, uh, you know, let's say there's some plaque here and you got some plaque. And what happens is, is that you got a layer of skin that grows over that plaque and protects it. So let's call that blockage, I don't know, 40%. So a lot of times you could be on the path of a heart attack or stroke yet given a clean bill of health. And it goes true for the next step that I'm going to talk about in a second here, but the majority of heart attacks and strokes actually occur with blockages that are less than 50%. I'll repeat myself. The majority of heart attacks and strokes actually occur with blockages that are less than 50%. How is that? Why is that? So what happens is this blockage, it's like a pimple on your face. I probably got one right here. But the point is, is that it's like a pimple on your face. And there's two things that can happen to a pimple. Either the skin is going to grow over that pimple and not cause any problems because the skin, this lining is protecting it very well, it's very thick, or what can happen is it can bleed. It can kind of inflame and now all the contents from that plaque start to obstruct that artery right at that site. 
and you end up with 100% blockage within days or hours. And many people think, well, I had a clean bill of health. I don't know how many times I've seen this in the career. I mean, I've been doing this since my late 90s now, the late 90s. How many people end up with a clean bill of health from a cardiologist, yet still end up with a heart attack or stroke? So that's, that's a really important thing to understand. The second option from a stress test is a really, um, there's a certain time and place when you should be getting this test done, um, is what we call a nuclear stress test. So it's also called a myocardial perfusion scan, what we call MPIs, uh, thallium scans or MIBI scans, just, just the dye that's kind of used. And when you look at this part of it, the, the, I mean these are all tests that you can get done to see, uh, they call them non-invasive. And the, the concern I have with saying it's non-invasive, it's not true. They inject a dye inside of you that's radioactive and there's a lot of radiation there. You can set off the alarm detectors without ever going through an alarm detector in the airport. And more importantly, there's a lot of radiation there. There's about 500, maybe even more uh, chest x-rays that are involved with doing that test. And we call it non-invasive. Now there's a time and place to doing that test. Uh, but I think we overdo it. And it's simply enough is if you want to really find out what your risk is of a heart attack or stroke, there's a third option, which we don't do as much anymore, which is, is very important, I believe, is what we call a stress echo. Um, a stress echocardiogram. Now what happens in that case is you walk on a treadmill, just like you do in a nuclear stress test, but instead of injecting a dye inside of you and doing radiation images, what we do is we lie you on a bed and then do ultrasound images to see how your structure and function of the heart is after you've been stressed. And so that's a safer test to get done. There's no radiation, there's, there's no problems with doing that test. But more importantly, why are we doing this whole umbrella of things? What's the whole big deal? And if you end up at risk over here, really the next step from here is to look, okay, well, if you're positive over here, we end up doing an angiogram. Now, an angiogram is a great test to get done because it's the gold standard for looking right inside your coronary arteries. And from an angiogram, what we can end up having is three options, really. Now, you can end up with a stent which, you know, is, is a treatment option. You can end up with bypass, or you can end up with medications. I'm gonna just call it medications there. So those are the three options that you can end up from an angiogram. Now, if you're coming down this path where you get referred to a cardiologist, you get an ECG, you get a stress test, a nuclear stress test, and then end up with an angiogram, I don't believe that's a good option for people. I think there's a better treatment option for people. Um, something that's important to look at is there's the, the COURAGE trial. And the COURAGE trial showed that a stent is just as good as doing medical therapy. So why are we even going to an angiogram? And there's different reasons as to how you treat heart disease. Now I'm a big fan of this option if you come over here, if you're actually in the ER. And if you're in the ER and you end up with a heart attack or stroke, Let's get yourself down to that angiogram as quick as possible. That's very important. But if it's not an emergency, if you're not in the ER and going to an angiogram, it's an invasive test. They insert a catheter through your arm. Now they're inside your arteries and they make their way right to the arteries of the heart, the aorta. And this, this catheter is inside your arteries there. And now they flush the dye and they can see what blockages there are. Now, the uh, interventional cardiologists, that's who do uh, angiograms, they're very good at what they do. But there's a time and place in when you should be getting a stent or bypass or medical treatment. So those are some, I, I, if you have any questions or comments or observations, I'm happy to answer you. But many times people think, well, I have a blockage. Let me fix it with a stent. That's not the way you want to treat heart disease. Uh, is a better way. Uh, ECP therapy is a better way. Uh, understanding nutrition and exercise. There's a lot of studies out there comparing stents versus exercise and stents versus medications. It's not always the best treatment option. There's a time and place. If you're coming from the ER, let's get there as quick as possible because you're having a heart attack. If you're having a heart attack, let's get into the angiogram and get a stent or you know, if you have left main disease, which is a blockage proximal to the left coronary artery, then bypass might be a better treatment option for you. But there are better things that can happen for you. And so that's kind of how you navigate heart disease. So we have a better 
aspect of that part of it. And so obviously welcome any of your questions or comments because there are going to be lots here. But what we focus on with the HeartFit Clinic is a few different things and I'll talk about that in the next video. Ah.